Hello everyone, so today I wanted to talk about entering punch card designs into a Brother Electronic machine, specifically in this video anyway, lace designs. So the techniques in this video will apply to the Brother 930, 940, 965 and in my case 965i. So I've got this Brother punch card pattern volume 4 book. And I want to enter this pattern here, 149, and here is the punch card for it here. Now, because we're using an electronic machine, we don't have to enter the entire punch card repeat. We only have to enter one repeat of the pattern. And if you look at this punch card, this particular one that I'm entering here, you'll see that it's actually 12 stitches wide. It was repeated twice across the card. Now, of course, a punch card has to be completely filled in width for it to repeat correctly on the machine. So not all designs necessarily are 24 stitches wide on a punch card, but they have to add up in multiples um, of numbers to go into 24. So in this case, um, this design is 12 stitches wide. You see there it was repeated twice and it's 20 rows long it was repeated twice in length and twice in width so we only have to enter this section here of this design so of course on a punch card it has to be connected together so the pattern can continually repeat for however long you need it to repeat for so it has to be long enough so you can fold it round and connect it together with little card snaps so in my case, the pattern here is 12 stitches wide and 20 rows long. So you'll have to look at the punch card and assess it first. How big is the repeat? Is it 24 stitches wide? Is it two? Is it six? Is it four, etc. Um, so what we're going to do, we've assessed how big the pattern is. I'm going to turn the machine on and I'm going to press the input key and it gives us 951. I don't know why the lights are flashing on the video that it's not actually flashing in real life. But anyway, it's given us pattern number 951 for our new design, so I'll press step. It's telling us in the memo display that this is going to be input in mode one, which is the default mode. This machine has two modes. Um, I'm not sure about the 930 and 940, it's likely the same. But anyway, that's fine, so I'll just press step. So the machine asks us how many stitches wide is the design? Well, we've found here that it's 12 stitches wide, so we'll enter 12, we press step. How many rows long up to 998 the machine offers there? Well, we've again assessed that it's 20 rows long, so we enter 20, press step. Now the machine's asking us for row one of the pattern and we use the black and the white keys to enter the design. Now on a punch card you have unpunched and punched holes, which you can see the dark ones here are the punched holes and the the white ones are the unpunched holes. And the same idea on the these electronic models, the white is basically your blank unpunched hole and the black, or grey in this case really, um, is your punched hole or your filled in space. So. We can see here, um, for row one here, we need to go one white, or unpunched hole. Stitch number two is a punched hole, or on the electronic um, scheme of things, it's a black key. And then the rest of the row is blank, and we don't need to press the white key another 10 more times. We just need to press the up arrow to go to row two. You can see row two here, in this case, is 11 unpunched holes and stitch 12 is a punched hole. So we're going to press the white key 11 times. And then the black key for the punched hole. And we proceed. Now, where the plain rows are, where you're designed to knit rows in between it because the lace carriage has to get its way back to the left hand side so that's why in these lace cards they give you these um plain rows it's the same on electronic charts as well 
Um, so you can see here that row three and row four are empty, but row five is where the pattern continues. So I've already gone on to row three, so I just press the up arrow twice more. So we've skipped those two rows and we've gone to row five, as you can see. So one, two, three, four, five is the next place of pattern. So again, a white key, a black key, and then the rest of the row is blank and so on. And we just continue following the card, imagining it was an electronic chart and you've got blank spaces and, um, sorry, white spaces and black spaces. Um, and that's basically all we do. So um, have a look at your punch card, assess how um, big one repeat of the pattern is. If you're more confident in just filling in the entire card, then by all means do so. Enter the pattern as 24 stitches wide and then count how many rows it is between the first line and the top line. Um, don't include, in, include? Don't include the leader holes there for um, connecting the card there, just in the design area. And uh, you'll achieve the same result, but it's just unnecessary work. But anyway, if it makes you happy, then by all means do so. So once we've entered the design, we can go ahead and press the input key to turn the input section off. And now we need to add the memo information, which is the in this case of the punch card, are these little arrows, which are, they're known as turnaround marks. Um, and that means on a punch card that you need to knit two rows in between lace transfers. Sometimes these turnaround marks will be replaced by a number and it'll tell you, that number will basically indicate how many rows you need to knit in between transfers. So instead of that turnaround mark, for example, it might say four or eight, and that would mean how many rows you need to knit. So on the electronic machine, it's a bit different because um, you don't have these arrows, only numbers. So the um, knit carriage information will be displayed here in the memo display. If we've entered our own pattern for a lace card, we need to enter that ourselves. So first of all, we need to input the design as if we're going to knit it. So I'm using a, oops, I don't want to do that. Press selector one for an all over design. Press step, pattern number, if you remember it was 951. Step. Our first needle position is six, so that, it's 12 stitches wide, so it's yellow six, so it's gonna be centered on the machine. All the needles on the left of zero are yellow, all the needles on the right are green. So yellow six means it's centered. Press step again and the ready light comes on and the machine is now ready to knit the design. So now it's time to add the memo information. So we press the memo key. It says row one, you see the ready light's gone out. So now we use these up and down arrows to advance through the design, how many rows long it is, in this case 20, and we can add our um, memo information. So now on a punch card, you'll see here, the first turnaround mark there is displayed on row three. Now, it's not actually going to be on row three. This is where it gets confusing when you're entering punch cards. You'll actually enter it on row four on the machine, on the electronic, because the lace carriage will end up on the left. It needs to get back to the opposite side of the carriage. So the way the machine works electronically is when you take the carriage across to the other side of the bed, it advances to the next row on the display. So by taking it back to the left, it will show us the number of rows that we need to knit in the memo display, which will actually be on row four. The reason it's done like that on a punch card is because that's what's level with the casing of where the card meets the case of the machine, where the punch card feeds in to the uh, pattern feeder. So you can see one, two, three, and we're going to go the row ahead, row four. So I'm gonna use the up key to go to row four. I'm going to press number two, that means to knit two rows. And that's basically all we do, and we continue following these. So that was the row ahead was row four, so five, six, seven, eight, the row ahead. 
and we'll press two again. And I think on this one, it's every four rows that we need to um, enter the memo information. So 12, 16, etc. And that's all we do. So hopefully that's not baffled you too much and you understand the concept of what I was saying there. Um, it's very simple. It's just the way I explain things. It sounds very long winded. So now we've entered the memo information, we can press the memo key again and the memo light goes off and we're back to um, number one on the display, which means row one and the ready lights on. So we can just begin knitting this design now if we want to. So I'm going to move this book out the way. We'll refer back to that in a minute when I show you the design. I've got 50 stitches here that I'm going to cast on to make this little sample of this design that I've just input. Now, with, in terms of the lace carriage, if you're using less than 60 stitches, and there is an exception to this, which I'll explain in a minute. If you're using less than 60 stitches, you don't need to use the extension rails. If you're using more than 60 stitches, you definitely need to use the extension rails because there's not enough room on the needle bed for both carriages past 60 stitches. So that's what you need these extensions for because if you don't have them on and you're using a lot more stitches than 60, moving the carriage back and forth, it'll knock the other one off and crash onto the floor and you'll probably cry because it'll break either the carriage or something on the floor. Um, and now the exception, as I mentioned, you'll see that the lace carriage grabs the timing belt, as you can see. Now, if we were knitting lace with some other, um, with some other, um, what's the word? Some other function on the main carriage in which we would need KC selected, then the carriage would be grabbing the timing belt. Say if you're doing some sort of edging type of lace, um, where both carriages have the timing belt, you can't have both carriages on the belt at the same time. You need to have it on the extension rails, no matter how many stitches you have in work. You need to have the carriage completely off the bed in that case, if both carriages are using the belt. Only one carriage on the bed at a time when both carriages are engaging with the timing belt because you'll damage the machine otherwise. But with that cleared up, let's get on. Um, when you uh, attach the lace carriage to the um, extension rail, if you'd, sometimes if you put it on it doesn't locate properly, you have to press this button in here and then sit it on the rails and you'll find it sits a lot better. But that's that anyway. So let's cast on and we'll get going here. So I've done a quick cast on here, a weaving cast on, and um, I've knitted 18 rows. It's important when you're using lace carriages on these Japanese machines that you start with, before you start lace with the lace carriage, that you have a considerable amount of knitting on there with some weight hanging from it. You can't just start knitting lace from cast on. It will go wrong. It just won't work. So you have to either have some rows of waist yarn or a folded hem or ribbing or something like that. Something that you can hang some weights off. In this case, I've got 50 stitches of a small comb and two claw weights, which is adequate. How much weight you'll need will depend on the yarn and mostly experience really, but experiment a bit if you've never knitted lace with the lace carriage before. So the rule of thumb, as I said, briefed earlier, the lace carriage, put them leaving brushes back up, the lace carriage is always on the left and the knit carriage always on the right. It's not a set in stone rule, but that's typical that on these brother machines, the lace carriage on the left, the knit carriage on the right. So the pattern's set to go here. I'm going to bring the lace carriage onto the bed so that the magnet on the back of the lace carriage will go past the turnaround mark and tell the machine to select the first row. I've got it set on N for normal lace because this is just a, a regular lace pattern. If it was a fine lace, I'd set it on F, but this is just regular lace, so it's on M. Go across and you'll see that selects the needles for the first row. And you won't tell either way on the video because it was flickering before, but the number is now flashing. And that means that the row has been selected. When we go back, you can see that the needles have been selected to D position. 
And when we go back, it will transfer these stitches, in this case, to the left. As you can see. And it's selected some more, and we'll go back. And there we go. There's no more selected, and you'll notice, as, we, as I said before, the lace carriage has to get back to the opposite side of the main carriage. And doing this advances to the next row and shows us to knit two rows, as you can see there. Now we knit two rows with the main carriage. If you're using finer yarns, this is a fine four ply I'm knitting on tension fine, fine. A fine four ply I'm knitting on tension five. Try and say that when you're drunk. <laughs> um, if you're using thinner yarns than that, like three ply or two ply that are knitted at a tighter tension, you may find that you'll have to use the fine knit bar that came with the ribber the plastic strip piece that sits between the sinker posts and the edge of the bed. It'll just help those stitches pop off the needles better when it's knitted at tighter tensions. Because as these stitches are transferred and bounced on top, balanced on top of each other, um, it becomes much harder for the carriage to knit them off. Um, but anyway, we'll just continue on. You'll see that two is still there. And as I bring the lace carriage towards back towards the right, that will go away. And we can just move the lace carriage until that number appears again. As you can see, knit two rows. You can see sometimes like this has happened here where it didn't knit off. That's what I was talking about. Glad that happened. There is to it really. And there we are, the machine's beeped telling us that it's at the end of the repeat. And of course here we knit two rows. As that's what it's indicating in the memo display. And if I continue on, it just starts all over again. So I'll knit a few more repeats of this pattern. I'll take it off the machine and then we'll compare it to the book. And there we have it. There's our design. You can see if we compare ours to the one in the book. You see it's identical. There we are. Of course, theirs has been blocked. Mine hasn't, but it's just straight off the machine. But I think you can still see it. Um, so there you have it. I mean, there's not really any difference. It's following a punch card to an electronic chart. The only difference is a punch card is unpunched holes and punched holes, whereas an electronic chart is blank spaces and black dots. That's the only difference. The only thing really that you need to pay attention to is the uh, memo information up the side here, which is slightly different on a punch card. But there you go. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. If there's anything else you need me to demonstrate, then please put it in the comments and I'll uh, certainly do a video and help, help someone out. That's what I do. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, hopefully it's not been too baffling for you. And I'll see you again soon.